Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week, we've got lots of new bikes, new shoes, new shoe gadgets, the bike fold, your upgrades, and our main talking point. Would you buy the best bike, even if it didn't look great, if it was a bit ugly? Let's go. So today we're asking, would you buy a bike if it was ugly? Would the look of a bike put you off that much? Do you buy a bike because it's fast or because it looks good or maybe somewhere in the middle? So I think let's start off with an extreme discussion. I'm gonna take you back to Francesco Moser's bike that he used in the 1994 hour record attempt. Wow, no wonder the UCI banned it, Manon. That thing should be put in a darkened room and never be allowed to see the light of day again. But the thing is, he beat the veterans hour record on that. And also in 1984, he beat the hour record on this steed. And well, that's not much of a looker either, is it? Oh gosh, I mean, it was the hour record attempt, not a beauty contest. So I'm sure when Moser was breaking the record, he didn't really mind what his bike looked like at the time. We can all wince now, but frankly, none of us have actually broken the hour record. Not even Ollie. 191 laps completed. The Canyon Grail is another example. It seems to be such a divisive bike. Many people are unsure of the handlebar design. It's just so out there and different. And if I'm honest, I was a little unsure at first as well when I got the bike. It's just so different, isn't it? But once I began riding the bike, I tell you what, I just absolutely fell in love with it. The ride experience is just incredible. So comfortable and the bike just seems to respond so well on the road and also on the gravel that I'm just addicted to riding it. I just, oh, I just love it, man. It's an amazing bike. Ah, Jesus. Didn't even make it up. Oh, sake. It's interesting as well because some bikes are loved and hated for their looks. Some people love the Canyon Grail and same goes for the Cannondale Topstone Lefty. Everybody has this image of what a bike should look like in their head and that image usually involves two forks. Well, Can Cannondale have taken a fork away from that and people will automatically question the bike for its looks as a result. I agree. I think when I see a bike like that, I just think it looks so cool but other people seem to turn their noses up. Maybe we get too distracted by looks sometimes. That bike has been designed and tweaked to perform in the best way possible. Yet all we talk about is the fact that it has one fork. Also, Manon, I'd like to point out that my GCM bikes sometimes get a mixed opinion, simply because they are massive. Well, what do you want me to do? I'm, am I gonna shrink in the wash? I'm, I'm tall myself. And these bikes, they fit so well and they perform amazingly as a result. And maybe they're not as in proportion as a smaller bike and people aren't used to the look of them as much. But for me, they're just the perfect bikes simply from the fit. And I think that's all that should matter really, the performance of a bike. I think people just wanna see us swap bikes, Connor. It's a good job we're still working from home and in different countries. Now TT bikes and triathlon bikes have changed a lot over the last few years and gone completely against what a normal bike should look like by even removing the rear seat stays. The Cervelo P5X, for example. Now, I'm not sure about anybody else, but having no rear seat stays actually scares me. It may look fast, but I'm not sure. It's not for me. Also, it looks like you could fit your lunch in those boxes at the bottom there. But uh, yeah, good point, Manon. And personally, I don't think the look should come into it, really, when you're buying a bike. I think if you're the user of that bike, you're not looking at it when you're riding, are you? All you're concerned about is the performance of that bike. And if people want to complain that your bike maybe isn't the best looking bike out there when you're flying past, well, that's their problem really, isn't it? The performance of a bike is everything to me. It's all that matters, in my opinion. If you're gonna get a bike, you want one that performs well, that feels amazing when you're out on the road or the trails or the gravel routes. So for me, you know, I'd buy an ugly bike any day. I totally agree with you, Connor. As long as it feels fast and feels good, then it shouldn't really matter what your bike looks like. Although when you submit your bike to the bike vault, you do want it to look good, so. I'm not sure. And at the end of the day, bikes are for getting from A to B for riding and racing. They're definitely not for riding to the cafe stop and admiring. Definitely, definitely not. 
Right, we wanna know what you guys think. Would you guys buy the best bike even if it didn't look great, even if it was a bit ugly? Let us know by heading over to the GCN app and voting in the poll. It's now time for some hot tech. This week, Trek released a new bike that you've all probably seen by now, the all new Trek Amanda. And Trek are claiming this is the fastest climbing bike ever. Now that's a bold claim, and it definitely depends who's riding it because I'm definitely not gonna be the fastest up there. This new bike features improvements in aerodynamic and new OCLV 800 carbon fiber. It also comes alongside the launch of the new Bontrager Iolus wheels and new Iolus integrated handlebars and stem. Trek also say that the frame, the SLR frame alone, weighs less than 700 grams. Now, that is super light. And I did some research and that is actually a 500 gram carton of Passata and a jar of pesto. That is how much the frame alone weighs. Holy moly. Trek are releasing 10 models in total in two different frame sets, the SLR and the SL. The SLR being the lightest of the two models. And I can't wait until we get back to racing and to finally see the Trek Segafredo men's team and the Trek women's team racing on these bikes. There's another new bike on the market, the Factor LS. It's a lightweight carbon fiber frame which claims to weigh just 950 grams. Factor has optimized its carbon fiber construction to deliver impressive stiffness which enhances power transfer. The LS is capable of accommodating up to 43 mil tires and it also has space for three bottle cages, the two standard ones and also a third one on the top tube. Next up, new shoes from Physique. These are the Infinito R1 El Bala Special Edition. This new shoe is developed on a Spanish national champion, Alejandro Valverde. Got two nice boa dials and the R1 full UD carbon outsole, lightweight stiff shoe for road racing. And they come in the limited Valverde edition colors. Another product we thought we'd mention this week is Neat Cleat. Now they've come up with this product that you attach your cleats to. And I don't know about anybody else, but I hate, okay, my cycling shoes just, don't, they don't smile the best. Cause you know, I sweat in them a lot and I go out on wet rides and they just don't dry properly. And they just, they just don't smell great. And there's nothing worse than putting your cycling shoes in your bag and then, you know, it doesn't smell the best. So they've come up with this product that you attach your cycling cleats to and then you attach it to your back. And they do all sorts of different attachments. So for speed play, for look, for Shimano, all different kinds of pedals that you would then attach to your bag. And professional cycling teams are already clocking on to this. They sponsor Team Movistar and Canyon Shram women's team. So there's definitely no excuses for forgetting your cycling shoes with these. Last but not least in hot tech this week, another new bike and Triumph Motorcycles, the iconic British brand, have launched their first ever e-bike, the Triumph Trekker GT. Triumph's first ever electric bicycle. And oh, I think this is well-timed really, with e-bikes becoming an increasing talking point in the sport at the moment. It comes with a whole host of high specification equipment and gear, including Shimano's Steps system. Cha-ching! It's now time for screw around upgrades and buy upgrades, where you submit upgrades that you've made to your bikes or cycling lives for the chance to win the ultimate prize, a GCN cap. Now, before we go on to this week, let's take a look at last week and see who has won this lovely prize. So, if you remember, we had Mika Francis's Giant TCR and Max Shady's BMC. And this was a very, very close one. With 55% of the votes, it was Max Shady's BMC. Well done, send us your details on Facebook and we'll get the cap right up to you. Moving on to this week, let's take a look what we've got. Okay, and now for this week's submissions. And I think we have some really interesting ones actually this week. It's gonna be another close run battle, I think. I, I'm not sure which one I'm gonna go for. Anyway, first up, we have Charlie Fleming and his friend found this abandoned bike on the side of the road ready for the scrap pile. Oh. Stripped it down though, fresh paint 
an all new Aventon parts, as well as a vintage to modern stem adapter, and she's ready for a few more miles instead of the trash bin. So I commend you on this restoration project. I love to hear about a bike that's been pulled from the scrap pile. So without even looking at the bike, that's already got some bonus, bonus corner points from me. And you can tell it's got a lot of potential when it was in the scrap pile even. It looks nice even before it's been upgraded, I think. I like the blue color on it originally. Um, so anyway, he's, he's put the rest restoration in, completely stripped it and wow, look at that. That's nice actually. You wouldn't even recognize it actually from, from the bike before. Nice little fixie now, isn't it? Fair play, fair play, Charlie. It's a great, that's a great upgrade. Next one though is from V35 Barmer. And this is his BMC road bike. Even though it's slightly dated, I decided to spend some money and upgrade it last winter because I like riding it and the look of the frame. I changed wheels and cockpit, cheap Chinese carbon, both great. Tire saddle, pedals, cassette and chain and a few other bits. Hope you like it, cheers from Switzerland. Well, hello to Switzerland from sunny Ireland. Um, but I, I think this is a great one. So that's a classic BMC. Is that, is that the one that Cadell Evans won the tour on? Might be. Wow. New bar tape for one. That just <laughs> makes all the difference, doesn't it? It looks like a brand new bike now. Nice new wheels set on it. It's gleaming and the mountains are lovely in the background too. Very, very jealous of that actually. So that's a great, that's a great upgrade. Great BMC upgrade. I'll be interested to see which one uh, wins. I think in terms of, in terms of how far the upgrade's gone, I think it was, um, I think it was Charlie Barmer because he's made it look like brand new again. So the other, the other, oh, the other one was nice as well. But anyway, it's up to you. Get voting on the GCN app now. There's a poll up, so we'll be interested to see what the results are. So get far and away. See if you can get yourself a cap. It's now time for the bike vault, where you submit pictures of your bikes, your pride and joy, your beautiful bikes, and we vote if they're a nice or a super nice. Now, if they're super nice, and there are a few things that you have to do to get a super nice, you don't just automatically get a super nice. The bike fault bell will get rung and it'll get put into the bike vault forever and ever and ever. And it's everyone's dream to get a super nice in the bike vault, so let's get started. First bike up this week is from Zebra Elephant. Interesting name. And this is Trek Madone SLR7 with Altegra Di2, very nice. Now, we all know that I like a matte black bike and I like a bit of a sparkle on a bike. And this has both. This has nice purpley metallic purple on the top and then a nice matte black finish on the bottom of the frame, which is very nice. Tan sidewalls. Wow, right, let's take a closer look. Valves lined up, crank in the right place. We have quite a nice background here of the sea. Sweden, very nice. I mean, pfft, and I can't say much more about this bike because I think that is very nice. That is a super nice in my opinion. First super nice of the bike vault. Next bike in the bike vault this week is in from Joshua Biggs 1996 with a specialised event from 2014. Oh, I'm a big fan of the handlebar tape, quite like that. The Dalmatian, Dalmatian effect. Very nice bike, very nice frame, nice colour scheme, but unfortunately we're not in Biggie Smalls and the crank isn't at three o'clock. We haven't got a chimney though, no chimney, but I think it's, mm, this is just a nice, this is a nice from me today. Nice. Next up, we have this one in from Amanda. The first after rebuilding this up. The frame set had been hanging in the garage for way too long. This is a Kyoto QOM with TT Swiss wheels. Now, I think this is possibly the cleanest bike I've ever seen. That is shiny. That chain looks absolutely immaculate. Good job of rebuilding this up. Very nice. Ooh, I'm a big fan of this. This just looks, it's just very nice to look at. And of course we get extra points for the GCN water bottles. I think I'm gonna have to super nice it. I am a big fan. And it's the only thing is it's not in Biggie Smalls, but varies from bike to bike so I'm 
there's nothing else I can pick out. I think this bike definitely deserves a super nice. Next up is this one in from Sean with a Cervelo S2 with SRAM Red um, and Eastern Wheels. And we have a Herbie. I absolutely love this, the Herbie film. It's one of, the, I, one of the best films. And if this was, if I was super nice saying the car and not the bike, I would definitely give this car a super nice, even though it only has one wing mirror. So super nice for the car, but we, we are talking about the bike here. And I, even though the car's in the picture, I think you could have got a little bit better picture because I just can't see the bike full on. I can see it's not a biggie smalls and I'm not sure where the valves are, but I think you could have got a little bit better picture with a bike in the middle of the car. Nice big clean, a bit of a bigger shot would have been a lot better. So super nice for the car, nice for the bike. Last bike in the bike vault this week is in from Essex Giant 1974 with this very nice Trek Domain SL5 with Shimano Di2 and a gold chain. It's bumped to that. But I can just tell by looking at it at first glance whether the bike is going to be a nice or a super nice. You, I just, just know, I just know. And obviously I think this is a super nice. Um, is it gold on the frame or silver? I'm not sure. I'm debating, questioning myself now if that e is even a gold chain. I'm a little bit confused. I'm pretty sure it's a gold chain. Well, I fist pump now, it's, it's already happened. And the track on the frame, is that gold or is that silver? I think I might be colorblind today, but I need to stop waffling on about that. Everything is lined up. This is perfect for the bike vault. You can see, you haven't just whacked your bike in front of a wall. You've put effort into this. You clearly watched the bike vault, lined everything up nicely. Super nice from me. That's it for the bike vault this week. We'll be back with more bike vault next week. In the meantime, you can take a picture of your bike and submit it to the GCN app in the bike vault section. That's it for the GCN tech show this week. Hope you've enjoyed having me and Connor. Remember, if you fancy yourself a new t-shirt, a new GCN t-shirt or a new cap or new some new Castelli kit, head over to the GCN shop and treat yourself. We'll be back next week. Thanks for watching everyone. See you soon.